Hey everybody, my name is John McCoy. I'm the production manager here at G&D Chillers. We're in our production facility today to run you guys through the startup on our popular portable fire and ice glycol chiller. First thing is our unit ship without a plug. We do this so our customers have a variety of options as far as power and availability for plugs in their own facility. When you receive your machine, inspect it for damage of any kind that may or may not have happened during shipping. Also, we want to go ahead and open up the control panel and verify that all of your breakers are in the upright position, that they haven't been tripped uh, during shipping or handling of any kind. So after you've verified that the breakers are all in their correct position, it's time to get your glycol mixed in, in the reservoir. It's a 35% glycol to water mixture or 24.75 bricks. You can fill the reservoir here. There's a hole, it goes right down into the reservoir. It's stainless steel, 35 gallon, fully insulated. And once you get your proper glycol mixture, it's time to get your plug plugged into the wall. Make sure that you have a certified electrician. Verify both power. Make sure it corresponds with the unit. It's a good idea to verify both the voltage and the phase so the electrician is aware as to what size breaker and power supply is needed for the machine. At this point, we've got your machine plugged in. We verified the breakers are in their correct position. You've got it filled up with a proper glycol mixture. Next, it's time to make sure that you position your machine in the right spot. It is a portable unit. You can move it as needed to wherever it is needed in your facility. We wanna make sure that we have at least 24 inches of clearance on both sides, both here and here at all times. That allows proper airflow through the machine and it'll prevent any issues that may occur during the running process. Next, it's time to turn the machine on. We can verify glycol pressure and pump rotation at that point, make sure that everything is the way it needs to be. All you gotta do at this point is turn the machine on. You're gonna see the thermostat light up. You may hear a compressor such as that, or it might be in heating mode depending on the ambient temperature and glycol temperature when it was mixed. It's time to verify the glycol pressure here on our pressure gauge. It should be at or right around 20 PSI is our factory setting. If you see a very low glycol pressure, it might mean that you have an airlock or it could mean on a three-phase system that your pump is spinning the wrong direction. A certified electrician can help you figure that out. Next, after you verify glycol pressure, you know you've got everything working, you've got good flow through the system, you can adjust your thermostat here for your desired temperature. The green numbers down here, that is your set point. The red numbers are your actual temperature of the glycol in the system. The machines come with a factory set point of 55 degrees. You can see that in the green numbers here. The actual temperature of the glycol right now is at 65. That's gonna vary depending on the mixture, the temperature of the glycol mixture as it's installed into the machine. If you want to adjust your set point, you can arrow down. The machine will automatically adjust. Now it's at 45 degrees as a set point. The compressor is going to continue to run until it reaches that set point, and then the machine will pump down. If the pump will continue to run and feed glycol. As it warms up two degrees, the compressor will kick back on and try to maintain temperature as best it can. In the event that you want it colder, by all means run it colder. These machines are designed to run at about 20 degrees as a safe set point for these machines. So if you'd like your machine to heat, arrow up to your desired temperature. For now, we'll say 95. You're going to hear the compressor shut off, and you're going to see a light engage here on the door switch. That's going to let you know that it's actually in heating mode right now. The heating element is engaged, and it's going to start warming up the glycol and sending it out at whatever temperature you, your desired set point is at. Once it's reached its desired temperature, this light will shut off, the heater will shut off, and it'll sit there. There's a two degree differential on the thermostat pre-programmed in. So if it cools down two degrees from where you set it, the heater will come back on, and vice versa for the cooling. If you have it set all the way down, let's run it down to about 45 degrees, and then we'll kick it back on. It's gonna shut off at 45 degrees. Once it heats up to 47 degrees, it's gonna kick back on and try to maintain the temperature as best as it can. Our portable glycol chillers come with a set of hoses. They're 20 feet long. That's so you can make connections from your vessel to the machine. Once you're ready to make those connections, the return is located here, marked by this tag. When it's ready to hook up your hoses, pull down, just like that. It's a quick connect system, makes it easy to, to move the machine around, make connections, and move it to a different vessel, a different tank someplace else. 
The supply is located on the bottom marked by another tag. And there you go. Once you make those same connections to your vessel, you guys are off and running and getting the glycol out to your tanks as needed. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you found the startup video helpful in your new fire and ice unit. Obviously, if you have any questions or concerns during the startup process, you can always contact us via phone or website.